All right, let's have some fun and make it snow. So before we do that, I can see over here in the outliner that I've got a lot of stuff from this tree. So if I select all of that, I could hit Control G and I'm going to call this tree. Great. Now I'm going to create the area of the sky where the snow will fall from. So if I go to create polygon primitives plane, it's going to be kind of tough to see where it is, but if I lose it, I can always select it here. And I want to go to my scale tool. I'm going to scale this really big like that. And then I'm going to go to my move and I'm going to move it way up here like this. This is where the snow is going to fall from. And now if I want snow to fall from this, I'm going to switch here to the effects menu. And when I go to the effects menu, you can see that this changes up here. Then I'm going to go to end particles and I'm going to say emit from object. Okay. Now if I rewind, and hit play. Okay, that's what it looks like. That looks pretty weird. Um, so I'm going to hit stop and rewind again. Now, I just kind of want to show you what's happening here. Here's the plane. And if I open that up, I can see that that's the emitter. So, and then I also have the particles. So the emitter is responsible for how fast the particles are coming out or where they're coming out or how they're coming out. And the particles themselves are more about the shape of the particle and the look of the particle. So I'm going to click on the emitter here. And in the attribute editor, that's this area here. And you can see that that's the third button. I'm going to go down to uh, emitter type and I'm going to switch that to surface. Now, if I rewind and hit play, that's a lot more natural way for the snow to come out. Okay, that looks good. And if I hit stop and rewind, um, one thing that you'll notice is, is your timeline here. Okay, when I hit play, it'll only play as long as your timeline is. And I think by default, the timeline is set to 120 frames. So if I wanna change that, I could go to this first box right here and I could type in 200. And now if I rewind and hit play, I can see that the timeline here will play um, until frame 200. And what you might notice is your timeline might be moving faster or even slower than mine. To make sure that they're all moving the same speed, let's right click on the timeline, playback speed, and then make sure that that's set to real time. Okay, um, actually, let's say play every frame max real time. Play every frame max real time. So what that'll do is it'll calculate every frame, um, meaning that it's telling each snowflake where to go on every frame. And if it can do that super, super fast, it's going to max out at 30 frames a second, okay? So in other words, if it could calculate that and it could do a thousand frames a second, um, we're not gonna have it go as fast as it possibly can. We're gonna just have it go with the maximum amount of speed is real time. And if that's too confusing, don't worry. Uh, later on when we get into animation, that'll all make sense. So now I've got the snow falling. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit stop when it gets all the way to the ground and even past the ground. And then I'm going to select the particles themselves right here. And I'm going to go to fields and solvers, initial state set for selected. Field solvers, initial state set for selected. And when I click on that, watch what happens when I hit rewind. So if I hit rewind, this is my initial state. Okay, so I don't have to wait for it to start snowing. Now if I hit play, It'll just snow like normal. Okay, great. Now, if I come look at this, the scene, just move the camera a little bit closer, I can see it's snowing. Okay. Really cool stuff there. And in the next lesson, I'm gonna show how to change 
these snowflakes, the kind of special snowflakes where we use a, a particular texture. But that's all I wanted to cover in this one. We looked at how to create dynamic snow.